Welcome to the Elks Lodge in Waikiki. My name is Pua Caninal Santos and we're having the Present Suicide Tools for Life and Healing After Conference. As we come together today to move forward our healing, to remember our loss, um, and to celebrate all those um, blessings in our life. And we also thank you, Keakua, for the many hands that it took to put this conference together. Cousin Lori will share a few with you today. The Night Rainbow, the Bull of Light, and the Value of Aloha. Each child born has, at birth, a bowl of perfect beauty. At this time, I'd like to call up the chair of our Survivors of Suicide Conference, Paul Kanina. Thank you. What brings me to this, this field is that my son took his life in 2003, and um, that was devastating. So from the death of my son came this life force, this life force that is here and present today. So I want you survivors that are in the room today, I, I want you to remember that you are the ones that are here today. We are the voices for those who didn't have a voice in that moment of despair, in that moment of pain. So I want to say this, that no matter how we end up, whatever pieces are missing, we still have a lot of work that we can do if we dare to take the risk. If we summon up from within us the courage, because we all have that strength and that gift within us, every single one of you, all you youth here today, I want you to remember this. You are a gift. I have a wonderful partner in the state of Hawaii, the Department of Health, and I'd like to have Nancy Kerr um, come up here. It is an honor and a privilege to be here today at this conference. It means a lot to us at the Department of Health, as Pua said, the Intervention and Control Section, to be partnering not only with Queen Liliuokalani Children's Center, but with so many people here who are part of our collaborative community trying to prevent suicides in Hawaii. I'd like to introduce Dr. You become the difference. You make 
make a difference. All of you people here make a difference in the life of some person. A great man by the name of Socrates once said, the world is full of answers, but until you ask the proper question, you're not going to get the proper or the relevant or the useful answer. So that being the situation, and when you learn, for example, through uh, Antonio Alvarez now, and the Safe Talk training, one of the things you're going to learn is how to, and to ask relevant and helpful and important questions. This panel is called the Doc's In. Yeah. And we're hoping that you in the audience have questions. What I would like to know is what is good mental health? It is a, an ongoing process. We, are, we may never achieve, but we should always be striving. The critical thing is that we do not become a tonal people until we become tonal persons. The person has to be in balance, in harmony with the mind, the spirit, and the body. Too often we forget the spirit. Yet we address only the, the mind and uh, the physical part. Each member of the family asking the question, why? How come? If a person makes a decision and makes the choice to commit suicide, they will do it. They won't ask permission. If they come to you and they hint like they're asking permission, they're really saying to you, I need help. And you need to respond. One of the things that we think about is, is when somebody gets to that point of hopelessness, how do we restore that resilience and bring that person back um, and, and really talk about survivorship. Um, I am a survivor. My father died when I was four by suicide. Um, he was 30 years old. My brother also died at 30 years old by suicide. So it's happened in my family. The, the youth really are, I think the very first question was about our hope. Um, every time I, I go and I, I watch what work they're doing, and, uh, you know, they're really more as an observer. Um, it's like they're taking this, taking control of these issues and they're, and they're able to put forth ideas. Even at your young age, you are empathetic. You are sensitive. And I'm really glad that you are here and that you've had all the training that you've had and you have the opportunity now to help other people. We have to make a difference between grieving for the death and celebrating the life. We're really fortunate to have Dr. David Brown here. And give him a hearty welcome to our my experience with suicide prevention started in the early 90s when I was deployed in Bosnia. A very difficult place for which to operate as a clinician, especially when service members are walking around 210 rounds of ammunition and you've got to try to convince someone that they don't want to use that on themselves. We have to keep our finger on the pulse to see, are we achieving success with our approach? Focus on introducing the survivors to the debriefing process. Explaining while you're there, you know how sessions can go on. I mean, you could be meeting, they're going to be meeting grief counseling for a long time. Anything goes. Maybe because... We actually had a kind of training back in January. Officially coded as undetermined intent or possible suicides. Come on, lama lama, okay, akua. Kukukuni. My Yakapu, the light of God, surrounds us. Kealoha, Kiakua, a puni my Yakapu, the love of God, in folds, develops, surrounds us. Kamana, Kiakua, a pakele my Yakapu, the power of God protects us. Kealo, Kiakua, a love my Yakapu, the presence of God. Makahi a kapo, Eliaku, 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 Elia